It's another week of This Week in Google Glass. We took the week off because there was a holiday in between. And now we're back and we're going to talk about these things right here. We've got a, we've got a guest on, Mr. Jason Salas, and we've got a lot more. So stick around. This is This Week in Google Glass, episode number 42. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek, you've got Geekazine or twig.tv, TWIGG.tv, and uh, I've got, as always, my cohort in crime, Mr. Luke Wallace. How you doing, Luke? Doing good tonight, Jeff. Uh, yeah, if the viewers are looking for me, I'm Luke Luca on Twitter, that's L-U-K-E-L-U-C-A, all one word, uh, or you can find me on Google+, Plus. that's google.com slash plus Luke Wallace. Or Luke at twig.tv, T-W-I-G-G.tv. All right, cool. Today we've got a special guest on for the first part of the show. Um, of course, he wrote, uh, he wrote a nice little book here, and I'm going to show it on the screen right now. It's in the O'Reilly uh, shop, and it's called Designing and Developing for Google Glass, Thinking Differently for a New pl Platform. It's in early release format, and it's coming out very soon. Mr. Jason Salas, how are you doing? Hi, right, thanks a lot, gentlemen, for having me on. And I am doing fantastic here on, in, I should say, in sunny Guam, where it is a very, very frigid uh, 92 degrees Fahrenheit today. It's, it's absolutely freezing. Oh, I thought you were in uh, Seattle for some reason. Oh, no, way out here in the islands. So at, at the time we are uh, in this hangout on air, it is 11.03 on Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Tuesday morning. Tuesday yeah. morning. So, well... <laughs> What what what's happening on Tuesday? So we got we got plans for that. Uh, it's hot out here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and okay. Uh, lots of re lots of reality TV and like everybody out here because of the uh, time shifting and everybody seems to be talking about the Game of Thrones, which I've never watched by the way, but seems to be something about uh, gorging, gouging out eyes. Gouging out eyes. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this on my uh, Amazon account very soon. But we're not going to talk about Game of Thrones. We're going to talk about this little puppy right here. It's designing and developing for Google Glass, thinking differently on a new platform. You said you had an announcement on that. Yeah, we've act um, there is a really interesting way that you can get involved with the book. And of course, I wrote this with uh, my good friend, Alan Furstenberg, and he is in upstate New York. And he was actually the very first Google developer expert for Glass. And oh, really? he, okay. yeah, he was uh, he was the very first person. There are two of them now, and the other guy is uh, John Reig, who's out in the Bay Area. But oh. Alan was the first one, and he's he's always participating in uh, in Stack Overflow posts, and he's helping people um, try and you know work through a lot of the complexities and a lot of the questions that people have about developing good glassware. And that's why he and I kind of came together because we we're both so very involved in the community, and we both said you know we should actually contribute to the community effort and we, could, we should do something and we should actually put together a book and show people how to do this the right way the first time out because I mean it can be very intimidating and that, that's the big misnomer about doing uh, developmental work and design work for glasses everybody just thinks oh just because it's you know this little um, computer that sits on your face you know it'll be like a two-day project if even that and it's actually can be a very intimidating challenge when you think about how you actually want to architect out an application and move from screen to screen to screen and hopefully cater to the micro interactions model that Google really pushes and you know like have as few taps as possible and you know really don't take the user out of the moment and really incorporate their real life background as the as the stage for your application and that kind of thing mm -hmm. can actually be really hard to do is because you know achieving simplicity is very often the most complex thing you can do that's true that's true and so what we what we're doing is now that the book is an early re release it's pretty much written for the first draft but there's are things that are certainly going to change and especially at IO in a few weeks um, I'm just you know saying prayers every single night to uh, you know every single deity out there that you know like there isn't some major announcement that's gonna force me to have to you know rewrite half of the damn thing already uh, <laughs> but which which is gonna be like another headache in and of, in and of itself but True. that being the case you know we, we want to tell people that if you find something in the book that you know um, you want to contribute to or you think uh, we could have done better or you find some sort of uh, mistake or something like that you know we are more than happy and we're taking a look at all submissions right now because it's an early release and if you do submit something and it winds up making it into the book we'll give anybody out there in the glass community full credit because we really believe that that's not just good literary practices that that's also good open source behavior okay. which is which which is a virtue that we really believe in okay well, that's that's good. That's great. And um, I don't. Uh, are you looking for developers? Or are you looking for uh, uh, 
people just reading and finding uh, their 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 uh, uh, editing problem or what? Uh, well, that's a good question, and, and and the approach that we took is, you know, a lot of people just thought, and there are a lot of, uh, there's at least two books in print right now that deal with like a lot of the coding aspects, and you know, we could have written a coding book, but we actually said, and you know, because Glass is such a new uh, product, and there's going to be so many people who want to get involved with it, we're like, let's just write a a book that deals with a philosophy, and the philosophy that we we came up with was called Think for Glass. And throughout the entire book, we say, you know, how is it that you can actually build out a glass service or a glass application in a way that really um, stays true to what glass was supposed to be? Okay. And you know, we we've seen a lot of uh, uh, we've seen a lot of applications kind of you know like kind of stray from that, and you know, like really force somebody to actually pay attention to the device for 20 minutes at a time, and you know, like stare up at the thing and completely you know be um, be completely um, taken out of what they're doing in real life, and that's that's not what we're all about. So the thing for for glass approach isn't just for uh, developers and programmers and architects and people that deal with uh, UI and UX. It's also for the entrepreneurs who just say, um, like, I've got an idea and we want to build something from scratch using the new wearable platform. Or it's also for uh, people who manage big projects for existing brands, like say, like your Netflixes and your Hulus and your Pandoras, and they can say, okay, well, you know, this is interesting, and of course we want to extend our brand right now. But you know, how exactly do we get involved in this space? And we just said, okay, well, here is an overriding guide in how to make your application very usable. Um, and basically not be a total straight port of what is considered like an, an Android app proper already. Okay. And just say, just load some, side load some APK onto Glass and everything and hope that it works like people were doing with Ingress in the early days. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, was totally, which was totally cool. I mean, you know, like, um, you know, I thought that was amazing. Um, but the pure intent of Glass is to actually be its own experience and, you know, not to say like if something... Just because something can be done on glass doesn't mean you have to do it, and that's kind of like the key part of being of thinking for glass is actually making not just the device but the entire ecosystem of glass really work for you. Okay, yeah, because uh, right right now uh, one thing that uh, some people know this is uh, happening is I'm working with a couple other people on a white paper on Google Glass for enterprise networks, and uh, so you're you're gearing towards people like that who's uh, who's kind of thinking outside the box, uh, bringing it in and figuring out how, to, how glass works on that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and people like yourself, Jeffrey, I mean, you're going to deal with things like, um, I see it all the time in, you know, in Google Plus communities and in forums, and people are like, okay, well, my enterprise network doesn't exactly use you know, normal Wi-Fi authentication, or we've got this entire stack that you know, like kind of goes outside what glass is supposed to be. Or we've even seen in like, medical communities, uh, people in those lines of work have actually taken glass, stripped the thing down to its bare bones, and then rebuilt the thing from a software um, from a software perspective, completely new. They're just using you know the hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's things like that, and, and you know at the same time you can still cater to those micro interactions where you can say you know you don't force somebody to stare again you know for extended periods. You don't force the projector to be on so to the point when you know you've only got 20 minutes of you know usable battery life off of it, and you actually create a very good experience that doesn't you know have some overlap with what your tablet or your smartphone should be doing anyway. And that, that's kind of the thing what we also talk about in the book is, you know, um, there are a lot of things that Glass probably could do. If your smartphone does it already, just let your smartphone continue to do it with that. Yeah. And, uh, and Alan, my co-author, and I are actually hosting a uh, hangout with some very good developers in two days. Um, and we put this in the Google Plus developers communities and, and concentrating specifically on developing games for Glass. Okay. Because, because that's a pretty interesting niche because, you know, you, you think about games in the sense that they're very immersive and they're, you know, you can, even for casual games, you're probably going to want to play it for at least a couple minutes a pop. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very, very graphically rich and, you know, like they're, they're very visual mediums. But with Glass, you also introduce, like uh, the Nintendo Wii did, is as a user, you actually become, you are literally the controller. Yeah. And things like that. And can you actually tell, can you, can you perform very compelling, uh, very high impact storytelling in 20 second fragments at a time? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm yeah. I'm interested to see what type of games we do come out with, or, or maybe turn this whole thing into a uh, second, or in some cases, a third screen experience out of there. Precisely. So, Luke, did you have any questions for uh, Jason? Yeah, no, it, it's great to hear. Um, I guess I would be curious, you know, given your perspective on glass and and you know making sure people do it right, are there any glass apps you're seeing that you feel are doing a really good job that you would uh, encourage people to look at for examples? That's a great question because basically our book is separated into 
Uh, it's like we like to refer to it, you know, because we're both theater dorks, right? Is we refer to it as like it's a three-act play, right? And so the orig- and this is the funny thing too, is the book has gone. It went from an original twelve chapters that we kind of like outlined and spec'd out. It went all the way up to eighteen. It got whittled back to fifteen. Went up to 16 then went back to 15 and now it's got a bunch of appendices um, the title of it has been changed four times over we've had to rewrite like one chapter in, in particular uh five times over so wow. um this is as a journalist it's been it's probably the most gnarly uh beat i've i've ever had to cover just because it's so clandestine you know information is you know it's either way out of left field that you know n- nothing's you know nothing could be further from the truth or you don't hear anything at all and all of a sudden it stops on a dime and like when you know xc16 came out um yeah it's like hey guess what uh google just announced uh video calls are no longer there i'm like okay well that forces me to like chop 20 percent of my book <laughs> oh yeah uh, yeah but but to luke's question uh, there's a very so again you know the book is separated into three different three acts if you will and the first one is discovery, just understanding that glass isn't just a device, but it's a proper computing ecosystem. You know, it's it's the cloud backend that it uses. It's the uh, app development frameworks, the Mirror API and the GDK. It's the device itself. It's the community, and it's it's everything and that that synergy of everything coming together. And then the second the second act um, is design, and we talk about you know like uh, the aesthetics and the cosmetics and and the usability aspect of it. And then the third part is actually we concentrate on development and what you're going to need to know about. Um, authorization, authentication, functionality, and things like that. But the second part is where we actually talk about um, what makes a great glassware application. And, and like beautiful segue by Luke, because we actually have a series of glassware uh, services, m- most of them using the Mirror API that we actually think are kind of best in show. And uh, Twitter probably being one of them. I know like some people have you know uh, back and forth opinions on this, but personally, I've always thought that Twitter is a beautiful implementation of what a glassware application should be and you know little tiny little nuances that, that a lot of people don't really take into consideration like if you if you've used a twitter uh glassware if you receive a tweet and you're going through the menu items uh if you favorite that tweet or if you retweet that tweet the next time you go to that menu item it's no longer white on black it's uh colored just a little bit to show you that you've already yeah. done it those kind of tiny little things really add up and really add to the usability and don't force you you know to have to, to have to use that and, you know the ordering of the menu items is very very key yeah. uh google's been talking about this recently and of course everybody knows that google's big push now is on design but you know not just using um escalating font sizes uh to show you know the to show importance in text and everything, but actually changing the colors. So instead of saying mm. you've got huge 24-point white text and then you've got you know 10-point to um, you know kind of uh, demote something or you know uh, depreciate it. No, so you use the same the same color text. You just make one like a little bit more grayscale. Okay. And it's it's visual visual techniques like that. And we also talk about the Google Plus Glassware, uh, which you know if you've noticed that you actually get notifications on Glass for for posts that you did on. You know, on Glass, of course, uh, but they actually support uh, multiple languages as long as they're, um, you know, m- multiple. I'm trying to think right now. Maybe you guys can jump in. Does it support non-Romance languages? Well, we uh, we were uh, we were questioning the fact uh, that there was a Japanese language in there because the uh, uh, the Glass APK was put out in, in Japanese. But uh, I think I think uh, I, I'm I'm wondering if there's going to be a you're just going to talk whatever language you're in, and your phone's going to be the one that, that does all the translating and, and bring it back and say, okay, this guy's talking French, this guy's talking Japanese or whatnot, and go from there. But that's... also, it's you know, you got to take the bitter with the sweet, too, because, um, you know, whereas the Google Plus glassware, you know, like, it can actually show you that, okay, well, some guy wrote in French, some guy wrote in uh, Spanish, and some guy wrote in, like, a German, and you replied to yeah. my comment, I can, I can see all of those. However, if you deal with the... The non-Westernized character sets, like if you've got a, like someone who's a Persian descent, they, they're typing in Farsi, or you take a yeah. uh, Japanese person who writes in um, in kanji, or maybe somebody who writes in Greek, or some or a Russian person who writes in Cyrillic. How is it actually going to handle those? And what you've been able to see is the uh, the international the internationalization of the characters. So, like in the early days, you would actually see like if you if you typed a something in quotes, it would actually um, it would actually decode. The quote, so you'd actually see the the character escaping. So yeah. you get like, what was it, per- mm-hmm. percent thirty, q uh, uh, semicolon q u o t semicolon again. So like things oh, like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Little yeah. HTML code escapes into the uh, into the glass. Exactly. So you know th- things like that. I mean, I mean, you know, where you have one feature that that really really is awesome, and then you have something like that which can you know 
kind of be a big monkey wrench in there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, well, well, let's get back to because you got to get going here. Um, uh, so what you're looking for is for people to what download the early release and read it. Is that how this this is working? Uh, they, they can actually go right now, and if they if they purchase it off the uh, O'Reilly site, um, they get a 20% discount of what the uh, final price is going to be, and then when they do that, they actually get uh, every single update as we continue to publish the book. And like r like right now, if you were going to grab it, you get of the 15 chapters and three appendices, you get the first 14 chapters, and then you know within in a couple more weeks, we're going to release an update with even more stuff. And then when the final version comes out, you get the final um, e version. Okay. And then this also gives you the ability to you know send in feedback, uh, post comments, and everything, and you know have a chance to make it into the final book. And and again. Even though Alan and I, you know, it was a labor of love for us and it was, you know, constant long nights of going back and forth and talking about the philosophy and then how best to express that and hopefully make it in a, in a somewhat intelligent manner. This book is all about the glass community as much as it is the two of us because it's been a nonstop um, surge of encouragement, of contributions, of people saying, hey, you know, if that's going to be what, how you be involved with the glass community, by mm -hmm. all means, you know, you want to host a radio show, you want to do a podcast, that's awesome. You know, you want to write a book, we are more than happy behind us. I mean, it, it, there are few times in my life I've been involved with a project where people have had our backs this much and everything, and it, it's just a wonderful way to be involved with the community. So, uh, so there's going to be mention of this week in Google Glass and Luke and myself into the book, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No. Every every time I, I've gone on like a show and everything, I was like, you guys will be in the book. Well, I I'll think you guys already are. Oh, we are. Yeah, oh, yeah I believe sweet. so. Sweet. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, um, so uh, what I'll what we'll do is, uh, Luke, uh, uh, if you want, uh, we can get the book and 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 uh, take a look at it ourselves. We're we're I'm always there to to add to stuff. I know. I'll I'll tell you one thing. Uh, out of Everything that I've seen and heard, I know that there's going to be two different models of glass, and one's going to be a model where you just what you said, somebody de deconstructs it and, and and uses the hardware and then creates their own software because they'll have to create a more secure line. Like for instance, uh, I talk, I say all the time with a medical professional, there's going to be a day where uh, in the first aid kit next to the defibrillator, there's going to be a pair of glass that goes straight to the hospital. And of course, then you have to deal with things like HIPAA laws when you have that type of communication. So um, I expect that uh, I expect a, a Google Glass that's going to be for the general person, and then some sort of uh, Google Glass or, or or a different type of OS that's going to be a more secure OS for hospitals, for banks, for uh, uh, places that need higher end security. I, I was going to say, please, please don't let them call it a Google Glass NT. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, 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 NT. I, th I think we're done with NT, and that's just the back end framework. Anyway, we won't get into that. So. <laughs> All right, well, where do people go for more information uh, on you and, and the book? Yeah, they can actually go to jasonsalas.com, J A S O N S A L A S.com, uh, and that's my site, which just just redirects to like all the social stuff. But yeah, we, we would really hope that people would um, check out the book, you know, submit your feedback, give us your criticism. And we really want this to uh, be a community born project. And you know, like we're, we're more than happy to work with the community right now. And um, I'll, I'll help you guys out on this week in, this week in Google Glass because you guys have certainly uh, educated me a lot over the last couple of years. So I'll, I'll get you guys. I'll get you guys a copy. Don't worry about it. All right. Sounds good. And, of course, uh, you can go up to O'Reilly, uh, shop.oreilly.com, and we'll have the link in the show notes so you can get to there and go from there. Jason, you're more than welcome to stay if you have time, but if you have to go, uh, thanks a lot for uh, stay, for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks so much. i got to go interview some interns. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck, and, and uh, uh, maybe we'll see you on a future, future episode then. Absolutely. I'd love to. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. All right, so that was Jason Salas, and that was the, the first drive-by glassing that we've ever had <laughs> on the show. What, what you, I, I know uh, it, it, was, it was pretty intense there because uh, of the fact that he only had the first 15, 20 minutes to talk about it, and we really appreciated that on the show. Um, and uh, and uh, what, what are your thoughts on the book so far uh, from what you've seen? Well... Uh, I think it's great that people are writing this kind of thing. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that uh, people are hungry for uh, and really needs to be outlined. You know, Google tries to outline their, you know, their kind of core tenants, but you're always going to need somebody who can actually explain that to you and like get down and dirty of, you know, well, what does that actually mean? You know, Google kind of talks at a much higher level and 
Uh, yeah. Sometimes you need to, you need like, well, what are the details? What's a good API to use? How do you build those APIs? What are things to consider? All of, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to take a look uh, deep in the book, um, but it sounds like they're, they're on the right track and we'll try to ha um, read it and have a, have a uh, simple uh, review of it uh, relatively soon, I guess. I'm going to have it read to me because I don't read anything. It's just, it's, it's too much time there. So, all right. Well, that was Jason Sellis. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to get back into the regular show. And, uh, but before we do, uh, you know, we did take a week off. Luke, uh, did, did you do anything this, uh, this holiday weekend, Memorial Day? Uh, yes, I'm sure I did. I'm trying to think, what did I do? I think I, I really just enjoyed not having to do a whole lot. So, um, <laughs> did go to, uh, company party uh, last weekend. Got it. Got outside. It's starting to get hot in Texas now. Um, <laughs> what's what's again. what's hot in Texas? Uh huh. Uh, hundred and ten or what? Well, that is very hot. Uh, but you know now it's getting it's hitting ninety. You know more regularly and that kind of stuff. And it gets to be where you're like, eh, do I want to go outside? Like, eh, it's a little warm. But uh, <laughs> went for the first swim last night. Oh, okay. Uh, and so. Uh, a little cool. The water hasn't warmed up, you know, quite to where I like it, but uh, not not too bad. Do you still have ice cubes in your uh, in your lake? No, we never did. Never. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we still have ice cubes in our lake, so just remember yeah. that. Yeah. No, it, it's actually <laughs> yeah. it's actually getting warm here. In fact, I do have the air conditioning on. We just had a major rainstorm last night. It was it was awesome to to watch, um, and listen to, uh, and it's a lot better than snow. That's for sure. So yeah. I'm really happy about What's that. What's hot so. there? Well, right now, right now, well, yeah, it's the springtime. So right now we're getting in the 80s, the mid 80s. Uh, but we'll hit a we'll hit 90, 95 uh, by mid July. By that's pretty hot. Actually, beginning of July. So, what's that? That's pretty. That's pretty hot. Yeah, we don't we don't like that around here either. So. Yeah, and of course we have the same type of. You have more humidity, I'm pretty sure, than us. Um, yeah, when it, I remember. It, that... I remember coming to Houston in oh, May, Houston's and it was 90 <laughs> degrees, and it was just like this thick humidity, and it was like yeah, 100 percent <sighs> humidity. Just it kills you. Like you yeah, just, you're just like sweating. You walk outside, and you're just sweating. It's it's just no fun at all. <laughs> so. so, well, my my uh my Memorial Day was a little bit different. Uh, we have a little festival here called Bratfest, um, in Madison, Wisconsin. That, that what what city am I in? Mm. Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Just said. Yeah, yeah, I know. So anyway, it's 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 a weekend of uh, of uh, uh, paying homage to the sausage. So and uh, I I got to play on this one of the stages there. In fact, it was it was a drive by playing, uh, which meant that uh, which meant that I wasn't expected to play. But uh, Shelly right there asked me to come up and play. She goes, "Do you know how to play jambe?" And I go, uh, "Yeah." And so she goes, "Can you play some jambe for me?" Because her regular jambe person couldn't play, so that's uh, me playing the jambe at, at Bratfest. But uh, I got a few pictures of Bratfest. It's a it's a lot of fun, and uh, and then and then I turned around and I uh, got to uh, we had uh, the Memorial Day race. So it was a mini marathon um, mm -hmm. over at, in downtown Madison, and I posted uh, a, a video on it up on my regular YouTube page, uh, plus Jeffrey Powers. Um, or actually, it's Mr. Jeff, youtube.com forward slash Mr. Jeff Powers. And that's what I could get for the uh, name. But yeah. uh, I'm, I'm trying to pull up one of these uh, races here. Um, so let's see. Dri I'm driving around the Capitol here. Got some nice pictures. So I'm going what's right a mini marathon? It's like a marathon is, oh, we got some henna too uh, oh. this weekend, that weekend. So that's Jennifer with her henna. And that's my henna with the Batman symbol because I needed nice. to have. Batman, and I still have it. It's still on my hand a little bit, so you can kind of see the Batman symbol right oh, yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, uh, so a marathon is 26 miles, and uh, the, the mini marathon. This is some more pictures of Bradfest, by the way, of course. Um, and then the mini marathon's only 13 miles. So oh, okay. I'm trying. It's like a half get... marathon. Yeah, it's a half marathon. So. I'm trying to get to where the marathon is, and I'm not succeeding too well here. Oh yeah, we we dropped a jar of pickles in the grocery store, and then and then we did some barbecuing, and then I did some more driving, and wow, 
There, 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 here we are. We're, we're, we're at the. No, this is the farmers market. So anyway, I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you run the mini marathon? Oh God, no! Do, do you expect <laughs> me to run the mini marathon? You're, you're crazy. Okay, here we go. This is the. Uh, you drove this it. Is the start, start line. Of uh, and I and I'm taking 10 second videos. I'm I'm doing a little project, uh, mm. and all of these are 10 second videos. A couple pictures here. So no, I took pictures and I took video. In fact, oh, okay. on my on my regular camera, I did a I did a um, I did everything in slow motion. So and this is they're starting up, and then of course everybody that's in the uh, wheelchairs get to start first, and then they they did it in phases. But anyway. Well, enough about that. Let's let's move on. But yeah, um, I'm I'm doing some uh, videos which I'm going to uh, post up on my YouTube channel, and then of course I did uh, all the video that I did for the mini marathon. I put up on my regular YouTube channel, um, and it was a lot of fun. So I got to really play with some of the features and go from there. So uh, that's that was pretty much my uh, my uh, 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 Memorial Day, and then we drank and ate and swam and stuff like that cool so cool. all right so you ready for some news or you got any news uh you want to share really quick or before we get anything um i guess not i guess okay. uh you know uh, we got google io uh, coming up quick so uh we'll be looking for i'm guessing there's going to be a fair amount of radio silence from google over the next few weeks as they as they uh kind of prepare for google io but yeah. Sometimes it's surprising what they announce, you know, in the weeks leading up to it, just because it seems like they should have waited. But they, they, it just means that they're starting to make cuts. They're starting to figure out, okay, we've got a two-hour keynote. We can only talk about so much. Oh, we're not going to be able to talk about this in the keynote? We don't, we're going to run out of time? Okay, we'll just just tell everybody now. And they just put out a little release saying, oh, yeah, there's something new coming out or whatever. And so that's. Have, have you been reading the rumor mills by chance and finding uh, uh, anything? Uh, not really, just because, it, I don't know, I don't ever see much benefit in reading the rumor mills. I mean, because okay. they end up being wrong so much that, yeah. and then they don't get everything. And so it's like, eh, I, I, don't, I don't bother with it too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for my clamshell iPhone that was supposed to come home. Yeah, where's my, where's the iWatch announcement that everyone said had to be today? And oh, I, I, I watch in. I want no, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Well, WWDC is, is for those that really don't follow it. WWDC is just hey, we're coming out with these products in the fall, and we're gonna have previews for you developers out there, so you can get your hands on it and uh, and code for it. So you will have apps ready for the new version of uh, Mac. What was it Mac Yosemite? What was it? Was yeah, it? OS X Yosemite, and then the. The new iPhone, when it comes out, will be running iOS 8. And yep. uh, so, you know, eh, all good all good stuff. Uh, just, yeah. you know. Do you run a PC or a Mac for uh, for your desktop or your laptop? For uh, So at home I have a uh, Windows machine, and then uh, at work I use a Mac laptop. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in both. I mean, the main, the main uh, screen here is Mac. And then the uh, the secondary screen where you see all the uh, other uh, windows and stuff like that is is PC, and uh, I, I run back and forth in in, in those worlds and mm -hmm. and go from there. So it's it's all good, but uh, yeah. yeah, we've got to live somewhere, I suppose. So all right, let's get into the news here, and we're gonna start over at theguardian.com and Google. Guess what? Google Glass. Google Google wasn't the first people that that put out glass. Did you did you hear this? This, this is crazy. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. it, it used to be a vacuum cleaner. Dyson, <laughs> 10 years ago, released the, the, uh, the smart glass um, with a microphone. With a, and this is really cool. If, if you go down, we'll go down this list here. I love this picture. I mean, this looks like a Walkman with, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with, a, with a, just the LCD camera and the microphone on it. Could you, have, could you imagine... What would have happened if we would have, if Dyson would have put out this uh, this glass here <laughs> ten years ago? Where would we be, Luke? Where where would we be with Google Glass? Would it be Dyson Glass? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's really hard to say. Um, you know, we've we've seen these kind of things before. I I mentioned well. 
let me let me answer your question. So I don't know. It, uh, it's very possible that we could be you know years ahead if they had uh, continued to move along with this. Um, it they don't really go into a whole lot of exactly what it could do. They said there'd be some sort of digital assistant, and you know it could read out emails and do some stuff. So you could imagine it doing very much what what Glass uh, does. Um, I don't think it had a camera in it. Um, but you know, it it definitely would have been neat. Uh, you wonder if, uh, you know, how Dyson decided not to. It sounds like they just decided to focus on, you know, vacuum cleaners. Um, but it's kind of interesting that that they worked on something yeah. that seems just so different from their normal, you know, field of oh, expertise. No, no, it's not true because Dyson actually they do a lot of different programs. And in fact. You said vacuum cleaner, and in all reality, uh, I, a month ago, uh, Dyson sent me a vacuum cleaner to review, which uh, my review is coming up very soon. But they also have like uh, the bladeless fans; mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. in, they invented that. And there's a lot of uh, products that they invent. It's kind of like Yamaha. If mm -hmm. if I ask you what Yamaha is, you might I don't know. You might think that it's a motorcycle. But Yamaha is also uh, the drum set that I have in my car is a Yamaha. Um, you know, like I said, a motorcycle Yamaha keyboards are Yamaha. Uh, you know, some of these companies they just they dabble in everything and then and then come out. And Dyson is one of those. So uh, I'm looking at this. Actually, the uh, this Dyson this uh, device does have in this design. It says LCD camera right there. Huh. So well, yeah, go. it did have a camera of some sort. Um, but it would also be a communication device where it's uh, just basically saying, you know, uh, I would guess you would plug it into your computer overnight. It would download what you needed. And then when you woke up in the morning, you plugged it, you, you turned it on, you put it on, and you said, okay, Dyson, what, uh, what, what do we need to, to find out? What do we need to dictate or, or whatnot and go from there? This would have been an awesome dictation machine. And uh, I, would have, I would have been all over that. So... Um, interesting stuff. I can't, I can't believe that Dyson missed the boat on wearable technology 10 years ago. They could well, have owned the market. Yeah, yeah. So there's, a, uh, there's another company that also looked into this. Um, I use it in one of my presentations that I give on glass. Uh, back in 2001, IBM actually had an advertisement on television for a heads-up display. Yeah. And uh, it was this little guy, and he was sitting on a park bench and, you know, looking through spreadsheets and yelling about, buy, buy, sell, sell, you know, like that, <laughs> that kind of stuff, like buying stocks or something. It was, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny to look back at now, but, you know, it's the same kind of thing of like, yeah, even, you know, and I think it was also 2001. Um, and, you know, that was a real product that they had and that, um, they were, I think IBM was writing the software. I don't know if they had written the hardware for it. Um, I forget some of the details, but, uh, yeah, a lot of companies have, have done this kind of thing in the past and abandon it for whatever reason. Um, but the same could be said for, you know, tablet PCs, right? Apple did yeah. the Newton, you know, you know, whatever it was, yeah. you know, 10, 15 years ago. And then they said, eh, it's not, eh, people don't really like it. And then they were able to reinvent it years later. So yep. maybe we're seeing the same kind of thing of just the technology is finally getting to the point where it makes more sense to do it now. So. And, you know, uh, before Dyson, before IBM, there was one other, one other big glass moment uh, before mm -hmm. Google Glass. And it goes like this right here. Oh, yeah. Young yeah. Wesley Crusher trying to, <laughs> Would you like to play a game? I think I think that really did inspire a lot of people. Like, it's amazing how much Star Trek uh, and and other sci-fi uh, properties end up doing that. They like people just people are like, yes, I want to make this thing. I want to make this thing I saw on TV because it's that seems really cool. I bet we could do that. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 do it. Wait, what? Oh, it's already been done. Dang it. Dang you, Dyson and Google. Now let's 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 go back really quick. Do you, uh, and and I I didn't read anything in the article about it, but I I do have to wonder. Do you think that Dyson's got any patents on what they did, and uh, patents that could ultimately kind of affect how Google Glass is going? I don't I don't know. Um, it doesn't mention that in the you know in the article. It it says that they. 
that they had this prototype and these are designs of this prototype, but it may have been something that they were like, well, we don't really see the need to patent anything, or maybe they thought there wasn't anything they were doing that was patentable. Um, yeah. Even though there probably was, it probably if you look back at some of this stuff, um, there was stuff that, um, you know, nobody had done before or whatever. Um, so it, it's interesting. I, they don't mention any. It's always possible that their tech team decided to put some patents out there. Uh, I think we probably would have heard about it uh, by now, but you never know. Someone might go start digging through the old Dyson patents and see what they can find. So. Yeah. Well, if you want to really do that, I suppose you could. So it's kind of like uh, I was watching. We uh, Jennifer and I went to see uh, X-Men Dave's Days of Future Past, and there was the one scene. I don't know if you saw it or not, and I won't, I won't spoil anything. Uh, Luke is Darth Vader's son. But uh, what? What? Nothing. What do you mean? Nothing. Uh, nothing. What? I'm not. I'm not <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I think I think I think you get a pass on. Okay. On uh, so, year old movies. Yeah, that's true. So anyway, um, th- they had this this one scene where they had, and I can't remember his name. Uh, the the ki- it's the kid that that runs really fast, um, and uh, he was he, there was one scene where he puts in a set of headphones, and I'm thinking mm-hmm. to myself. It's 1973. Did they have earphones back in 1973? I knew they had, I knew they had uh, uh, transistor radios with mm-hmm. earpieces, but did they? And he put in like a set of headphones, like and I was big? wondering if they had that. They weren't that big. They did. They, they looked. They looked the part like they were. I don't know. They were. Uh, they were not designed properly or whatnot, but uh, you know they were they were ones that hooked over the ears and and stuff like that. And I just I just had to wonder is is this yeah. is this nineteen seventy three? Because they, uh, they were no. doing TV before then, so yeah. They, the, but no, they sort of had they had transistor radios and they had earpieces, but I don't remember having headphones. And you know I I look at tech history all the time. That's that's yeah. one of the yeah. websites I do. So I'm still trying to figure it out. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to say that I'm 100 percent correct all the time. But I am. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's 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 weird. Now, yeah. speaking of which, uh, let me ask you this question: Do your Google Glass make you feel powerful? With the power of a thousand suns, I would say yes, they do. Um, okay. I feel smarter, faster, taller shorter, thinner, and stronger than when I'm wearing Google Glass. So I, 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 don't, I don't know if I understand the question too much, but I know why you're asking. So um, I would say in general, no, I don't really feel superior. I feel like I am part of a club, part of this, you know, kind of early adopter club. And I feel maybe more dorky because, uh, you know, it's, it's something obvious that people can see, but you know, yeah, I felt pretty dorky before, so it's not. So not this is just kind dorky. of evening, you know. It's 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 the feeling dorky versus actually being dorky, and, and yeah. there you are, you're now caught up to yourself or something like that. So yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe now I just look as dorky as I am. Okay, maybe that's the thing. Well, that's where <laughs> that's where we're headed next. Uh, this Forbes article, and it's really interesting. Uh, Google Glass, they make me feel powerful. Is the name of the article, and it's about uh, they had a Harvard School Business School did a case study on glass to uh, check out the analysis on wearable products um, to debate different marketing strategies on and maximizing potential. So the uh, professor opened up the semester asking students to identify the customer segments. Um, that led to adoption, and he came up with the three things: enterprises, followed by gradual consumer uptake, geeks in the what they call the digerati, which kind of sounds like uh, I don't know some sort of dancing troupe or something <laughs> like that, and then yeah. uh, and then general consumers. And even those most students chose enterprise, followed by gradual consumer uptake. Uh, they they feel the students are no, you, you know you're wrong, you're wrong. So we we believe it's it's the geeks in the digerati. And it's the, uh, it, it, it's, it's the cool, it makes you feel like smarter. I mean, I don't know, I, I paid 1500 bucks. Does that make me smarter? Um, I got a piece of computer on my head. Does that make me feel more powerful? Do people see me in more power, powerful role? I, 
I haven't conquered a city, state, capital, or <laughs> nation yet. I didn't have a major movie where Superman was coming after me. Um, so I would have to say, does it make me? Does it make me feel powerful? Yeah, a little bit. But does in in general is am I more powerful? I don't think people know me anymore with Google Glass, and they then they, they, there's locals that do know me because I have Google Glass. But I I think I would have met them over time anyway. So that comes back to you, Luke. Uh, do you do you agree with what I'm saying, or am I totally off base? Yeah, no, I I think that uh, you are uh, you're saying exactly what most people would say. Um, I feel more connected. I feel like there are certain things that are quicker for me to do than maybe they are for other people. Um, I can deal with certain kinds of information a little quicker mm -hmm. in that, you know, I get an email, I can quickly see, oh, that's just a, you know, email I can deal with later. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing to worry about. I got a text message back, you know, okay, great. I don't need to do anything with it. I don't, but I guess in a certain way like that, it does make you feel a little more powerful because you're dealing with things quicker. So like you're not really smarter, but maybe you're dealing with things faster. And, um, so I think I know what they're getting at. I think they yeah. phrased it in an interesting way or maybe a weird. Oh way yeah. It was, it wasn't, it, it was, it was, I don't want to say it was written badly, but it, it was written badly. So uh, it, yeah, I think I think they kept, tried to keep it open to kind of bring your own interpretation into yeah. it. But the, the the thing is, I, I just think it's just like, a, well, it's just. I remember when somebody said, "Well, putting on glasses makes you a different person," because you know I I grew up wearing glasses, and uh, and wearing glasses makes you a different person than if you don't wear glasses, and it, it, they kind of made it feel like you know people with glasses are power and and we get that we get those in in little chunks um whether it be the the powerful business person wearing a pair of uh of, of glasses or or the naughty school teacher she wears a pair of glasses so we can be happy and 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 look at her pictures a little bit more i don't know so i, I that's where i come from it so. yeah i i yeah i don't yeah, uh, I think different people interpret it different ways, you know. But yeah, I I think your points are are fine. Like it's uh, it's definitely a um, there's certain advantages to it, you know. Yeah, the phrasing may not be the best, but I think we can agree that yeah, there's certain advantages to it, and uh, we kind of take to those, and it's all good. Unless I think I, maybe maybe the people of San Francisco might be the exception though because yeah. go ahead uh, you mean like it because they they get angry with the people wearing glass or? well i think i think it's more like you know uh uh big fish in a big pond type situation where you've got so many people wearing google glass in san francisco and then where we are i mean we could probably count on two hands and two feet how many people have google glass in our cities and i'm even I'm even including Dallas, which is uh, how many million people population? Six. Six. Six so million. I, and I and I bet you, I bet you that you know, the amount of if if you if you count if you found out all the Google Glass wearers in in the city of Dallas, they won't even come close to the Google Glass owners that are in San Francisco. Oh yeah, probably not. Simple as that. Yeah. So. so. Anyway, so the power debate, you know, do we feel more powerful? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where this, this article is really going with this, where Harvard, somebody's trying to analyze it and get some data so they can say, they can justify that Google Glass is there. So let us know your thoughts by letting us know, Jeff at twig.tv, wherever it is, somewhere on this bar right here, and uh, kissing, or Luke Luca and uh, Luke at twig.tv with two Gs. So... All right, let's move on from there. Last article of the day. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked in the past about 3D printed uh, devices for Google Glass and, and, and all those little companies that are making little bits and pieces. Um, Mashable did a, did a quick article on this one, uh, this one guy who's making lots of 3D printed glasses. They're, you're seeing the video cover with him. Have, he has the, uh, 
the target um, adapter for his Google Glass. Excuse me, and it, apparently that's because uh, there were a couple uh, target games that were coming out, and he felt that you know having a target wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I've seen some 3D printed stands for Google Glass, um, uh, plug-in stands where, and, and one that actually you just plug into the wall and you put your glass on top of that, and go from there. Um, Luke, what what have you seen for uh, for new products, new third-party accessories for Google Glass? I've seen other things like this guy makes where it's a cover for covering uh, the camera. But I think uh, this this guy, Todd Blatt, uh, has some really neat little accessories that he's selling. Mm -hmm. Well, you also have the G-Pop. Um, and I met yeah, those guys sure. at South by Southwest where, you know, you cover the uh, the glass with whatever skins. I kind of like the fact that I'm Sky Blue, uh, Team Sky Blue, so I'm not going to change that. And you should become Team Sky Blue someday there, Luke. Maybe they'll let you s the switch over at Google I.O. Maybe. I really like being part of Team Cotton, though. Oh, no. you got to be Team Sky. Come on. What What's it uh, going to take to bring you over to Team Sky? I don't know. I don't know. I really like Cotton. I, I've been enjoying it. Um, well, I like Cotton, too, but, you know, my Cotton shirts and my Cotton pants, that's, what ha <laughs> that's where I like Cotton, not on my glass. Um, sky. Although, mm -hmm. you know, cotton and sky kind of work together, so it's it's mm -hmm. kind of like clouds and, and blue. Anyway. I, I kind of am liking switching around the different ones. So I think the G-Pop is a nice uh, nice solution to that where people can kind of switch out the look of their, their glass, you know, a little more regularly. You want to get back on subject. Yeah. So, but so if you want to get back on subject, so Todd Blatt, he, the things that he made, uh, that he's selling through his, um, uh, it's not Instructables. It's um, sorry, I forget the name of it. Oh, that's I, that's okay. Yeah, I forgot about Shapeways. it. Shapeways. Shapeways. Uh, so he's got stuff that he sells through Shapeways, which is a really neat site uh, for buying things uh, that are kind of yeah. custom. Uh, made so he's got one that's a, a privacy shield so it actually covers up the camera so yep. that people don't have to be worried about you even sneaking a picture with a wink or something like that um, he also has a display shield that doesn't block the camera so that uh you know maybe if you're outdoors or something and you want a little more contrast there uh you know the image would then be displaying with a solid background yeah um so and then they neat. had uh, my, my favorite one is the on air one where you put it over and it says on air that's yeah, it. you I have am a little on-air sign. Yeah. So when you're broadcasting, you can put that up there. So you know you can be like, "Look, I'm. I'll let you know when I'm recording, so you don't have to keep asking. Are you recording me right now? Because I would say that's, you know, probably the second most common question I get. Yeah. Um, he also has a little targeting scope that we kind of talked about. Yep. Um, and then he even has a pencil holder that goes on uh, the one side, so you can have a pencil attached to your glass uh, to for storage, I guess. Well, he's also got um, not only pencil holder, but he's also got a little uh, uh, plant uh, plant thing. So you can actually start your plant through the, the little planter thing and then, uh, and then, I guess, put it in the ground when it's growing bigger than the planter because the planter is, like, super small. Yeah, uh, yeah, it seems like it's really, really small. So I'm, I'm not really sure what kind of plant would really grow there, but maybe something it seems like something would outgrow that pretty quickly so i think yeah. that may just be kind of a joke thing but i, I don't know it's kind of cool yeah well I, you know I, I i i wouldn't mind getting little accessories to put on the sides uh there was one picture i was going through my photos and uh, it would it would take too long to, to go through it but when i was at south by southwest somebody gave me this little uh, this little thing that they 3d printed up and they said we've got to have a picture with this thing at every on every picture um wherever we go and so i said okay uh so what i did was i put it on top of my google glass like right here and then we took the huh. picture it was like a little like uh it, it looked like a little bit like the reddit uh oh, guy little reddit guy but, yeah. yeah but it wasn't the reddit guy um it was it was something some character I, i'm not exactly sure but i have the picture somewhere but it was really funny because it's like, yeah, I can probably see that. Maybe glue. No, well, maybe. Uh, where's my? Uh, do I have it around here? Um, no. Well, oh, uh, the closest thing, I, of course, I was if I did this with my little panda, my mm -hmm. little panda thing. But uh, I have Boba Fett and a little 
Einstein. I've just rearranged this whole place, so I'm not sure where it is right now. But a little Einstein bobblehead I could put on top of there and go from there. But uh, would you? Uh, is there any type of 3D printed device that you would want to actually get for your Google? Because I, 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 I've been I've been offered G pops. I've been offered those little bits and pieces, and it's like I want my Google Glass. That's it. Mm-hmm. So, is there any any way you want to bling out your Google Glass? Well, technically, you already have with your frames. But is there any yes. other way you, you'd be uh, geeking out your uh, Google Glass? I I kind of like his little uh, screen protector um, that like kind of slides around the glass, uh, okay. the actual prism part. Um, that's not that's not really you know a decorative thing. Um, I would be a little concerned with the 3D printed, you know, piece that it might sh- end up scratching that prism a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, that that'd be my only little concern with it. Um, but yeah, I like the, I like the little lens cover. Like if I worked in a place where people were really concerned about, you know, me recording stuff, I could see getting one of those just so people don't have to worry about it at all. Or, um, you know, if I wanted to wear it to the movies more, maybe I'd get something like that just to kind of pop it on there and and uh, make people feel a little safer about it or feel like, you know, nothing to worry about. Um, okay. But, yeah, I like the idea of, uh, I, I like the idea, I, I should stress, the of a little planter hanging off of there. I think that that's, that's kind of funny. It's kind of like the, uh, reminds me of the vase in the, uh, the Volkswagen Beetle, you know, where you can have little flowers in there. It's like, it's just, it's just so, so weird. It's just, you know, it's, it's fun. Okay. Okay. Actually, I as you were speaking, I've, I've got the perfect thing that I want for an accessory. And I've okay. got, I can pull it up okay. right here. There we go. A little spring with the mustache so I can have a mustache on my Google Glass. Just kind of hanging down. Yeah. yeah well, you know, like, have you, have you gone into those stores where you can see the sunglasses and then there's like a mustache hanging down yeah. from the sunglasses. Yeah, you, you have, know, because nice I want to. I, I really want to have a mustache. I mean, it's just one of those things <laughs> yeah. that I'll, I'll do someday is have a mustache. But you know, and, until then, I got these. So. You mean a fake mustache? Because you seem to have a pretty good real mustache. I don't. What are, what are you trying to say? I shave every day. You know, some people just grow hair faster than others. Like I shave once a week, uh, just just to knock it down. But it's about it. Yeah, I shave. I just shaved my head, so it's nice and cool. That's the best part. So. Uh, the the real legitimate uh, one that we've talked about before that I uh, I really do like is the little dock uh, that you put your glass in and has kind of a little charging thing on it. I, I really do um, think that that's a neat um, it's a neat idea. I kind of have rigged my own little dock at work where I just kind of hang my glasses over a, a picture I've got on my desk. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I've I've been trying to figure out myself on a, a good dock. I'm I'm trying to pull up a picture of that. That's a good yeah. point. Um, oh, here we are. Yeah. This is one of this is one of the docks that they have, um, where it's you, you put your glass in and that's on the stand. And then there's another one where it's a little bit more, uh, in more intense. But the glass is, is horizontal as opposed to vert. Or yeah, horizontal as yeah. opposed to vertical. Yeah, I like the vertical one. I might I might have to get one of those and for uh, keeping my glass in at night when I'm charging okay. it. All right. Well, that does it for this episode. Did you, Did you want to add anything else to this last story, or or did you have any other stories you you saw last week? I think it's good. I, I love that people are are building little things like that for glass. And I think, you know, the great thing about these three D printed things is that. We've talked about if glass changes shape, what would happen, or you know, will the next version look exactly like these, or will there be some some form factor change? Well, it's great that all these three D printers are jumping on board because if the form factor changes, they can take their same idea that's been popular and just make it in the new form factor, and it's not a you know you're not going to have to wait six months for all the accessory manufacturers to come up with something. So yeah, and the best part is uh, a lot of this stuff is online. So if you have a 3D printer or you know somebody that has a 3D printer, you could go make it yourself and mm-hmm. put it together if you wanted to. So uh, there's a lot of – there's not much, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to make this and it's going to cost you another $300 over the $1,500 Google Glass that you have there. So yeah. I, I kind of like that from there. So anyway, um, I th- – 
think that's it for this week. Wow. I, did, I feel like I'm so out of practice with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, week off so, does that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, some other things, uh, I don't know if most people know, but I actually did cancel one of my other shows um, so I could kind of take a little bit of the summer off. Um, and uh, kind of regroup on what I'm doing, and I've got formulation of what the new stuff is going to be, and uh, so there's no rest for the weary. Plus, like I said, I'm actually doing some more writing, um, and I'm, I'm working with a couple people on a couple white papers uh, that will be coming out with Google Glass, and a couple ebooks on podcasting, which I'm working on as well. So it's it's going to be a fun full summer that's going to be less recording content and more putting down information onto paper. So, all right, Luke, why don't you tell people where they can find you? My name is Luke Luca. Uh, I work on the second floor. Uh, you may have, you may have seen me before. Um, no, uh, Luke Luca. Uh, so that's L U K E L U C A, uh, on Twitter. M O U S E. Hmm. Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh and then uh Luke at twig.tv, T W I G G dot T V or uh on Google Plus Luke Wallace. Uh you can find me there, ask questions, uh send me your thoughts on glass if you want to be a guest. Uh we'd love to talk to you and uh have you on the show. All right. Cool, cool. And of course my name is Jeffrey Powers. You can find me on Geekazine, think magazine, put in a geek. You've got bang boom bang geekazine. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'm, I'm still going to be doing videos. We've got, uh, got the other shows that are, are working. But, of course, every single Monday night we're doing this show at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, or if you're in Guam, 11 a.m. the next day. So, you know, hey, it's, it's all good. Wherever you watch the show, wherever you want to participate, come on board and say hi. We have the Q&A section over there or over there, depending on where you're watching. Um, uh, ask questions and go from there. Come back next week and be a part of the show. So, all right. Well, that does it for this episode number 42. Thanks for all the fish and thanks for Jason Salas to come in, coming in, talking about his book once again. If you want to know more about his book, it's called Designing and, De Designing and Developing for Google Glass. And if you want to be part of this book, Luke, we're, we're in this book. This is cool. So yeah. uh, if you want to be part of this book, uh, get the early release, read it, and give them a whole bunch of uh, notes saying, you shouldn't be saying that, and whatever, however that works. So anyway, that does it for this week. Uh, we'll be back next Monday night, uh, same bat time, same bat channel. So you guys take care, geek out, and uh, have a good one, and keep wearing your Google Glass. Take care.